Today on the channel, we're going to take a look at another all-in-one storage and server solution. And luckily, this one doesn't run a Celeron. Today's video is brought to you by me and the all-new craftcomputing.store. There's no better way to help support the channel than by picking up a set of coasters, whiskey stones, rocks glasses, or any of the other accessories we have to help set up your own home bar. And it's all designed 100% in-house. Visit craftcomputing.store and start drinking like a pro. Cheers, everyone. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. This is the Synology Disk Station DS923 Plus, which promises to be a four drive, all in one server and storage solution at a fairly affordable price point. Before we get into it, thanks to Synology for sending out the DS923 Plus, their 10 gig network adapter, and a pair of four terabyte hard drives for my review today. As always, with reviews, no money changed hands. Synology has no input over the context of this video, nor will they see the review before you do. At $599, the DS923 Plus sits somewhere in the middle of the bell curve when compared to similarly spec NAS boxes. At that price, you get a 4-bay disk station, two 1 gigabit network ports, a Ryzen R1600 embedded CPU with two cores and four threads, along with four gigabytes of DDR4 in single channel configuration. And that feels like as good a place as any to start this review. The R1600 is an industrial embedded CPU based on AMD's Zen architecture as in the original 2017 Zen architecture built on their 14 nanometer node process, even though the CPU wasn't released until 2020. It's got a base clock of 2.6 gigahertz, a max turbo of 3.1, along with a TDP of 25 watts. This dual core CPU might have a leg up on the Intel N5095 CPUs found in similarly priced NAS boxes, but it's also not a significant leap forward. In fact, while the Ryzen R1600 is around 23% faster in multi-threaded tasks, it also falls behind the N5095 in multi-threaded workloads by a fairly significant margin, upwards of 40%. Not exactly a great showing, considering multi-threaded performance has been something I've been very critical of of servers like this in the past. Now, normally when I run benchmarks for CPU performance, I'd run Cinebench and some other similar software, but I'm not able to do that on this particular system, so I was forced to use Geekbench. And that brings me nicely to my next point. Even though the DS923 Plus is a standard x86 powered PC, there's no easy way to run your own operating system or software on it, as the AMD R1600 embedded has no built-in video output. CPU scores were compared via CPU Monkey online to get Geekbench numbers from other systems, and Geekbench was ran natively on this using the Linux shell. But that also means if you were thinking of installing something like TrueNAS on the DS923 Plus, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Because there's no video output and not even a serial output, there's no way to get into the BIOS, modify hardware level settings like RAM speed, or select different boot devices. So what's on here is what you get. But let's take a step back for a minute and take a look at the rest of the hardware here. We've got four three and a half inch drive bays, which support SATA drives via a six gigabit per second backplane. There's also a pair of M.2 NVMe slots easily accessed from the bottom of the chassis. Around the back of the unit is a pair of 92 millimeter fans, which provide cooling for both the disk drives and the internal motherboard and CPU. There's also a pair of one gigabit ethernet ports built into the unit. And we've also got the optional 10 gigabit module installed. More on that a little later. The DS923 Plus also supports expansion over eSATA. Man, it's been a while since I've heard that used. With their five bay DX517 costing nearly the same as the DS923 Plus while offering nothing but a shell and a SATA backplane. Power for the unit is a four pin DIN connector, which is a bit disappointing as well as it's just a 12 volt eight amp power supply. As the DS923 Plus is offered as a small business solution, I'd be much happier if they went with a standard 12 volt barrel jack instead. As someone who has outfitted businesses with similar units in the past, proprietary connections were always a red flag when I was in the buying process. If the power supply fails, you now have a single source vendor to get a replacement. Just ask Gamers Nexus how they feel about proprietary solutions when it comes to Synology NAS gear. We'll get back to hardware and performance shortly, but first we should probably get this thing fired up and running. As there's no video output on the NAS, setup is 100% web-based. Browsing to the IP address of the NAS automatically starts a setup wizard, which walks you through installing the latest Synology OS, otherwise known as DSM, along with any system updates and configuring an admin account to manage your device. 
There's also an option for setting up 2FA, which is a very nice touch on a self-hosted device. The whole process only took around five minutes to complete, and once loaded, will prompt you to create a storage pool. Like similar NAS devices in this range, you've got two options, ext4 or butterfs for your file system. Again, we're using a pair of 4TB SATA disks, so I set up a NAS with a 4TB RAID 1 in butterfs. Now, to say I wasn't expecting great performance would be a pretty vast understatement. Again, we're only running a pair of Seagate Ironwolf 4TB spinning SATA disks, and I'm also happy to admit when my expectations are misplaced. Testing out the 1 gigabit per second network link, I fully expected the drives to stutter after an initial burst of speed. But during both the sequential read and write transfers, the DS923 was able to hold that full 1 gigabit per second without dropping off at all. Not too shabby, considering we're only running 4 gigabytes of memory, and the drives themselves are only 5400 RPM spinners with 64 megabytes of cache. Shockingly, with only a pair of spinning hard drives in here, I found myself being interested in the 10 gigabit network test, an option that will run you an additional $120 at the time of this review. Now, obviously, 10 gig read and write speeds are not in the cards, but we still managed around 195 megabytes per second sustained file transfers, or just under 2 gigabit per second. As for the rest of Synology DSM, they offer one-click install packages like many other NAS solutions in this price range, though Synology's offerings seem to be much more business-oriented than I've seen in the past. There are still services for Plex, MB, and even Mega File Transfers, but most of the other common home services are nowhere to be found. There's no BitTorrent client, ad blocker, or even file sync services like G Drive or Microsoft 365. There are, however, mail servers, proxy servers, VPN gateways, backup solutions for endpoints, LDAP and RADIUS services, a virtual machine manager, and even Git and Python codebase repos. It's not difficult to tell who Synology is marketing their products to, and also who they aren't. Speaking to the business slanted side of this presentation, it makes me question even more some of the hardware decisions of the DS923+. At the $599 asking price, you're getting an AMD embedded R1600 2-core CPU and 4GB of non-registered ECC memory. And Synology will happily sell you a second stick of 4GB for only $90. My problem is, 4GB is pretty much the minimum amount of RAM to even power on this system and run even the most basic of features. 650MB is used just by the OS with file sharing enabled. My personal Plex server eats up nearly 6 gigabytes by itself to keep track of my library. My VPN gateway idles at around 500 megabytes of memory in reserve. Basically, if you expect this device to do even a fraction of what it advertises, you're going to be on the hook for a memory upgrade pretty much immediately. I'm starting to feel like any server, whether it be for basic file storage or network services, if the intent is to run multiple services, they need to be coming with a minimum of 8 gigabytes today, whether that be a Raspberry Pi, a Zima board, or an entry-level NAS box like this. Especially considering modern CPUs take a major performance hit when stuck with only a single channel of memory. While I do appreciate Synology using 3200 speed sticks, it's all for naught if they only include one. I'd much rather see 8GB of 2133 than 4GB of 3200. If you do wind up with a DS923+, Plus and you find yourself needing a memory upgrade, just about any DDR4 SODIMM stick, whether it be ECC unregistered or non-ECC, will work just fine for you. I tested my review unit with a couple different kits and had no issues whatsoever. At $60, you can get yourself a 16GB kit of ECC 2666 from TimeTech. Or if you want to drop ECC, which makes sense since the R1600 isn't ECC compatible anyway, a Team Group 32GB kit of 3200DDR4 can be had for as little as 50 bucks. After spending the last few weeks with it, I am left with some mixed feelings when it comes to the Synology DS923+. While I am fairly impressed with performance, especially when it comes to file transfers, easily holding 2 gigabit on just a pair of drives, as equipped with 4 gigabytes of memory, you're going to quickly run out of resources for doing pretty much anything else on this server. Services and configurations are geared for business environments, but the unit itself is 100% plastic and easily outclassed by pretty much any competing server in this price range when it comes to fit and finish. $120 for the 10 gig network add-in card is a solid upgrade option, especially considering the two available NVMe slots on the bottom of this unit and the fact that we were able to push 2 gigabit on the two drives as I mentioned earlier. But for hard drives, you are limited to SATA only, so SAS disks are a no-go. 
Also, none of the hardware or fit and finish complaints really detract from what you get for $599. A 4-disc storage server with light service capabilities, one-click installation, all brand new and backed by Synology warranty and support. While Synology's DSM operating system offers a full array of business features and services, I also get the feeling it's more or less designed to lock you into Synology's environment. While you can back up your NAS server to Google Workspace or Office 365, there's no file sync option to pull data from those environments. That means if your business runs off of Synology NAS and decided to start utilizing cloud services, the only way to expand is to use more Synology services. I know that conversation is just a little bit deep for a basic NAS appliance review, but it's these types of practices I spent over a decade actively avoiding for my customers, getting them to be vendor agnostic and be able to solve and expand at their own rate and choose their own hardware and software along the way. While I would like to see 8GB of RAM as the base offering here, I don't really have anything negative to say about the Synology DS923 Plus as a standalone product. Performance is fairly solid. It's small, lightweight, incredibly quiet, and offers a decent amount of expansion potential. It's only when you begin looking a little further into business planning that the offering begins to lose some of that shine. Synology's first-party expansion options for the DS923 Plus are overpriced at best and highway robbery at worst. $90 for a 4GB stick of RAM is pretty bad. Just don't look up what they're charging for a single 16GB stick or for their 5-disc backplane. Although, to be fair, Synology is far from the only offender in this category. If you're interested in the Synology DS923 Plus, along with the parts that I recommend for expansion at a much lower price, I will have affiliate links down in the video description. Make sure to go give those a look. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on the social medias at Craft Computing. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, head on over to craftcomputing.store, grab yourself one of the new pint glasses, or join my Patreon. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a Synology brand DS923 Plus network attached storage server. There are four locks on the front of this device, each housing a 3.5 inch hard disk drive. The key is made out of plastic and has a hexagon shaped nub which operates the lock. As such, we should be able to pick this open fairly easily. I'm going to use this turning tool to apply bottom of the keyway tension and this hook in five th and just that quickly we got this open. Let me go ahead and do that one more time so you can see that it was not a fluke. Okay folks, as you can tell, this is not a product I would recommend for keeping your disk drive secure from physical theft. In any case, that's all I have for you today, and as always, have a nice day.